This is the first of two videos talking about section 6.1. In this video, I'll be talking about velocity, position, and displacement. So we've already seen that velocity is the derivative of position, and that position is an antiderivative of velocity. That's a relationship we've talked about a lot. So I'm going to introduce a new concept, which is the idea of displacement. So the displacement of an object over an interval of time is the difference between its position at the beginning of the time interval and its position at the end of the time interval. So as we typically do, we're going to consider an object moving along a straight line. And so maybe the object starts out here. So this is S of A, the position at time A. And then the object travels along, and maybe sometimes it goes forward, and sometimes it goes backwards, and sometimes it goes forwards again. And eventually it ends up at S of B. So this distance, the distance between where it ended up and where it started, is the displacement. So we sort of close our eyes at the beginning of the time interval and then open our eyes at the end of the time interval. And then when we open our eyes, we see, oh, now the object is over there. It used to be over here. How far apart are those two positions? So if displacement is positive, that means the ending position is further to the right or further in the positive direction than the, uh, the uh, beginning position. So that just means that overall, in a net sense, the object ended up further to the right than it was to the left. So S of A is over here, S of B is over here, so the displacement is positive. Again, it might not have gone there in a straight line, right? It might have zigged back and forth, like we saw in the previous uh, slide, but it ended up further to the right than where it started. But if the displacement is negative, then that means that S of B is less than S of A, so the object started out further to the right, further in the positive direction, and ended up further to the left, further in the negative direction. Again, it could have zigged back and forth, but we end up further to the left than where we started. That's what we would call negative displacement. So how does this relate to integrals and the things that we've been talking about? So if we integrate our velocity function, integrate from a to b, what we get is exactly what we've been talking about, exactly the, the displacement s of b minus s of a. So this right here, that's just the fundamental theorem of calculus that says that when you integrate a function from a to b, you can plug in the two numbers a and b into your antiderivative, which in this case, antiderivative of velocity is position. So that means that when we think of the velocity function in graphical form and we look at the areas, as we've seen, integrals measure net area. So we can think of this as, again, the net area, the difference between this positive area, which would represent positive displacement, and this negative area, which is going to uh, represent negative displacement. And so the total displacement would be the positive area minus the negative area. Now, if what we want to know instead of displacement is the actual total distance traveled by the object, then instead what we have to integrate is the absolute, is the absolute value of the velocity function, namely the speed function. So in other words, if what we want to know, here's S of A, the position at time A, here's S of B, and let's say that the object in fact did zig back and forth, so what we might want to know is the total distance traveled by the object. So we want to know this distance plus this distance, the distance from when it turned back around, plus this distance from when it turned back around again. So we want all of those distance all added together, even though some of those motions were to the left, to the negative direction, which if we didn't have the absolute value, that would be indicating by negative area, and that would reduce our total displacement. So when we take the absolute value, that takes all the negative parts of our function and flips them over into the positive. So this is the same velocity function as before, but when we place absolute values around it, the negative area, the area that used to be down here, got flipped over when we took the absolute value, and now we're counting that as positive area. So in practice, doing an integral that has absolute values, evaluating this can be tricky. So evaluating uh, this kind of integral can be tricky, but we'll work through an example in this video. Okay, so let's first look at uh, an example of looking at displacement. So we've got this velocity function, 2t squared minus 3t minus 2, and we want to find the displacement of the object over the interval from 0 to 3. So what we know is that the displacement 
is just going to be the integral of my velocity function 2t squared minus 3t minus 2 integrated from 0 to 3. So we know how to do this. We're going to find an antiderivative. Antiderivative of 2t squared is going to be 2 thirds t cubed. Antiderivative of 3t is going to be 3 tabs t squared. And the antiderivative of 2 is going to be 2t. And then we're going to plug in 3 and plug in 0 and subtract. So when we plug in 3, we get 2 thirds times 3 cubed minus 3 halves times 3 squared minus 2 times 3. And when we plug in 0, we get all that same stuff, but with zeros plugged in. Now this second set of parentheses, that's all just one big zero. Let's work out the first set of parentheses. Again, feel free to put this on your calculator. I'm just gonna do this sitting right here. So 2 thirds times 3 cubed, 3 cubed is 27. 2 thirds of 27 is 18. 3 squared is 9. 3 halves of 9 is 27 over 2. And then 2 times 3, that's 6. So this is 18 minus 27 over 2 minus 6. So that's going to work out to be 12 minus 27 over 2, which is 12 is 24 over 2. So that's going to be negative 3 over 2. And again, negative displacement there just means that over the course of this interval from 0 to 3, the object ended up 1 and a half, 3 halves units further to the left than it was when it started. So now in this problem, we're going to instead, same velocity, but now we're going to find the total distance traveled by the object over this interval from 0 to 3. So what we need to do is integrate the absolute value of the velocity function. But how do we do that? How do we integrate an absolute value? We don't have any antiderivative rules for that. So what we need to do is look at the velocity function and figure out when is it positive and when is it negative. So what we know, in other words, what we need to do is we need to graph v of t. So when I graph this on my calculator from t equals 0 to t equals 3, the graph that I get looks a little something like this. It's a parabola, so no surprise there, so I get something like that. And I can tell from my calculator that this crosses my x-axis, or t-axis in this case, at t equals 2. So that means that from 0 to 2, I'm going to have some negative area, and from 2 to 3, I'm going to have positive area. But remember that total distance traveled means that I want both of those areas added together. So if I want the negative area from 0 to 2 to actually count positively, I'm going to put a minus sign in front of it to make that be positive. So 2t squared minus 3t minus 2. So without the minus sign, this would be this negative area from 0 to 2. So adding that minus sign in front is going to make that be positive because I don't want the displacement. What I want is the actual distance that it's traveled. And then the area from 2 to 3, I don't need to put a minus sign in front of that because that's already positive, so I want to leave it alone. So I'm going to do basically two problems that are going to be very similar to what we did in the previous problem, uh, but we need to do them separately. So this is going to be minus. This is going to work out to be 2 thirds times t cubed minus 3 halves t squared, right? So this should look very familiar from what we did before. And then plus, same antiderivative, 2 thirds times t cubed minus 3 halves t squared minus 2t from 2 to 3. And again, we need to plug in and subtract. And all that's left to do is a bunch of uh, somewhat tedious arithmetic, unfortunately. So we've got 2 thirds times 2 cubed minus 3 halves times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus all of that with 0 plugged in, which is just going to be 0. And then plus all of that stuff with 3 plugged in, so 2 thirds times 3 cubed minus 3 halves times 3 squared, minus 2 times 3, minus all of that stuff with 2 plugged in. So 2 times 3, or 2 thirds times 2 cubed, 3 halves times 2 squared, 2 times 2. And when we work all of that out and simplify our fractions, that's going to work out to be 47 over 6, or about 7.83. So that's our total distance traveled. So again, total distance traveled should always be positive because we're integrating the absolute value. So any time the function would dip below the x-axis or t-axis in this case, uh, we're going to flip that over and count it as positive area. So here's a little summary. Some of this stuff is stuff that we've talked about before. Some of it is new in this video. So position, which we usually write s of t, just gives the location of the object at time t. And if position is positive, that just means the object is located on the positive side. 
um, which can be above the water line or it can be to the right of the origin, right? Whatever positive means for whatever problem you're working on. Negative position means the object is located on the negative side. Now velocity, we sometimes write that v of t, we'll also write that as s prime of t, same thing. Positive velocity means the object is traveling in the positive direction. It might not actually be in the positive location, but it's traveling in that direction. And the negative velocity means the object is traveling in the negative direction. And speed is the absolute value of velocity. And because of that absolute value, speed cannot be negative. Now displacement is given by the difference in the position of where you started from where you finished. So as we talked about before in this video, positive displacement means that the object is farther in the positive direction at the end of the interval than it was at the beginning. Negative displacement means the object is farther in the negative direction at the end of the interval than it was at the beginning. And total distance traveled, when we do that by integrating the absolute value of the function, which can be a little bit annoying because we have to break up the interval into the different spots where the function is positive and negative. And the final answer that we get from looking at total distance traveled cannot be negative because, again, the absolute value there.